Hey, hey, system coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, back again with a video and a rebuild that I've been waiting to do for quite some time. A rebuild that has been requested by you lovely people. We are going ahead and rebuilding Parma. Yes. Oh, yeah. Parma, it is time to go ahead and take a former Italian beast back to the levels it used to be at. It's sad to see Parma down in the Serie B in the 14th position. As you guys know, the uh, Serie B is not licensed anymore in FIFA. So we have the team in the rest of the world section and we have brought them back. Parma is back to life. We have replaced the lowest placed team in the Serie A with the likes of Parma. And we're going to be creating a squad that is not just great. We're going to be creating a squad based off some of the club legends of Parma, which are some massive ones, by the way. So if you're excited, smash that like button. This rebuild, I swear, is going to be fun because I personally love doing rebuilds in uh, in Italy and just generally FIFA videos in Italy. So let's get started. So this is a page that showcases some of the biggest players for, fa for Parma in their history. And there are players like Gianluigi Buffon, the likes of Ben Arrivo, the likes of Cannavaro, one of the only defenders to ever win a Ballon d'Or, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have Lorenzo Minotti, Lilian Turam, the French lad playing at Parma back in the day. Then he had Fuser in the middle in 1998, Baggio in, the in their midfield as well with the likes of Juan Sebastian Verón, who was an incredible Argentinian midfielder. We have Gianfranco Zola, who obviously did incredible things at Chelsea. We have the likes of Hernan Crespo, and I am going to be trying to rebuilding, uh, rebuilding Parma based off some of these players and basically having their next versions in this Parma squad. I mean, this Chiesa, some of you guys might know his son. He's currently playing for the Italian national team. And uh, his dad, as you can tell here, was quite a beast at Parma back in the day. So let's start off immediately. 5 million in a preseason tournament. And by the way, saying that we're going to bring back legends like Buffon, I got to admit, Buffon is already in the team. I think you know that. I know that as well. Buffon is in this squad. He went back to his former club and now he's playing for them again. But we're going to make a point out of going ahead and signing his regen as fast as we can. So once Buffon retires, we're going to pick up his regen. We're going to put him straight into the starting lineup and grow that kid as well. So Buffon will be in our team in the first season and hopefully after that as well. When it comes to Panama players though, there are a couple of interesting ones that we need to keep in mind. Some of them are actually really, really talented if I can find them right here. This guy is very talented. The Romanian, who is uh, a player that actually has potential above 80. When it comes to players with potential above 80 though, he's one of the only ones that we have in this squad. The rest of the team is not necessarily up to those heights, but there is Karamo, who we can bring in back from his loan, who is actually a player that also has potential up to 80. So there's a bunch of players that Parma has put out on loan that we can bring back. And by the way, we're not playing three at the back. That ain't happening. I personally want to play in a 4-1-2-1-2. That is the formation that I'm going to go for. The budget itself, guys, as we do go back into Serie A as the worst team, is coming in at 11.5 million. I reckon within six seasons, we should be in a Champions League final. That is the goal that I'm going to set for myself. Hopefully, I can achieve that because I do think it's not necessarily going to be easy. I personally always have a hard time with Serie A career modes, and that's why I love them so much, is because they have some really, really quality teams in here that are at that high level in FIFA. I think it's one of the most enjoyable career modes you can run for yourself. But this is the formation we're going to go for. I am going to be recalling some of the lads. I am thinking about it. And I think captain-wise, we're probably going to keep it on Buffon and then put it straight onto his regen. I think that's the plan that I have personally. So we'll see how that goes. Gianluigi Buffon, I, I like having you here now as a 43-year-old goalkeeper. But my man, we're going to go ahead and try and extend his contract. He's, he doesn't want to extend it even more than it is. Actually, he has a two-year contract. Okay, that's cool. So maybe we get to keep him for two years. But no matter what happens... 
he has to be here. And that's also going to be an issue because if his regen is low rated, we have a big problem because we're going to have a low rated goalkeeper that we try to carry through the multiple years that we're going to be going through. And that, my friends, is going to be a big challenge. The goalkeeper is the most important position when it comes to simulations. All right, guys, we're now at the end of 2021, but August. Yes, it's only the first transfer window. And somehow our team is actually currently up there in the sixth position after the first game. One point. I'll take that. I'd love to finish there. Don't think it's going to happen. But you can see our budget has gone up to 34 million. The reason for that is obviously we started off with around 10 or 11. But we have sold a lot of players now. 32 year old, 34 year old, 27 year old. All these guys are leaving the team. They're going to make room for the old legends second versions to come in into the squad this is how we're looking at the moment don't get used to it some players might survive but i'm gonna be honest i really want to base it off of that team from back in the day to make this even more interesting for you to watch so let's kick it off man it's time to make our first signings. You might be asking yourself who's gonna be the Crespo of this team who's gonna be the Argentinian striker it is Jackie Chan. Jose Manuel Lopez. I've just signed him. A tall Argentinian stri striker coming into the team who has the physical side of play. But of course, we'll have that finishing as well. As we all know, Crespo used to be a very, very good player. A lot of people that are a little bit younger only know him as an icon in FIFA. I still remember his long mane and his ability to score goals, loads of them. And Jose Manuel Lopez, the Argentinian, is going to try and replicate that in this Parma team. We spent a lot of money on him. I'll show you guys the uh, amount that we have to spend on every single transfer. But I have kind of focused on the attack on this one. So I really hope that the defense can hold this season. As Chiesa, we are bringing in Giacomo Raspadori, one of the most expensive ones that we are bringing in and someone that comes in with unbelievable stats. You know him, I know him. We've all probably used him by now in FIFA 22. This, this guy is just so good, like so enjoyable to use as well due to the four-star skill moves and the five-star weak foot. The high-low work rates. He's going to be the Chiesa of this team to play alongside Crespo. I think this striker partnership is going to be incredible for us in a couple of years' time. But I think Raspadori can be the main man starting off this season already. We have upgraded that striker position massively now. And to come in as the Zola of this team, my friends, it is Orsolini. The Bologna center attacking midfielder is coming into our team and it has me excited. We're going to be working on his passing play. Not the best finisher, but a guy that can dribble, a guy that has high attacking work rates and a player that is 76 rated and is 24 years old. So not necessarily just a youngster like that, like the 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds that we're bringing in, but someone that brings in a little bit of experience as well into that squad. So now... Now we have made those three signings and you have seen their ratings, you would recognize these guys are coming in at quite good ratings, which would cost us a lot of money. This is the setup for the team that we have right now. And I think this is how we're going to play the first season. So it's not necessarily looking amazing. I'll have to fully admit that, um, especially that right back position at the moment is not looking too good. So if I have any money laying around still, I'll go ahead and try and get something done there if I can sell a bunch more players. But the right back has to be uh, I think Turam, right? He was the right back, if I'm not mistaken. So we would have to go ahead and bring in a French right back, even though I think this guy might be French. He is French, <laughs> which is interesting to see. So we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, build him up if I don't have the money, but we'll see what happens. This is the setup. These are the first three players that I've brought in and including Buffon, that makes it four from that uh, Parma team I've shown you. And after I've shown you them, I should also probably show you how much we spent on them. So Raspadori, 17.5 mil, most expensive one, makes sense, highest rated player. Orsolini, 12.5, and Lopez, for the striker that we had, plus 2.5 million. Lads, I'm sorry, but Caramo is gone. I've gone for a straight swap deal because I didn't have money and I've signed Turam. I completely forgot that Turam has two sons. The one that plays in the attack for Gladbach and one that plays for Nice. And the one that plays for Nice actually can play right back as well after a little bit of time. We're going to turn him into a right back. He comes in at a 75 overall, 6 foot 4 tall. 
Kefren Turam has me excited. I'm going to put him into that right back position and he's going to be my main guy. And I can let you know, yes, Caramo is gone. And now we're going to be putting, what's his name? Where's this guy? Brunetta onto that left wing spot. It is what it is, right? So Turam, yes, he would be worse in that position. Do I care? No. His dad played there, so he's going to play there. This is the perfect exchange. Instead of going ahead and creating a new Turam, there he is. Turam. I completely forgot about the Youth Academy on this one. And we have an incredible player here with the name of Daniel Ricci. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to promote him to the senior team and I will be using him. I haven't used the Youth Academy players in the last few videos. And a lot of people have said, Johnny, just go ahead and use them. So for this video, I'm going to bring him back for one time. See what happens. Let's go ahead and put Ricci onto the left wing. I feel like that's the spot for him. Uh, he does have pace, he does have dribbling, he does have great skill moves and a great weak foot. Wow, high low work rate, 16 years old. Wow, this kid's insane. <laughs> so he goes straight into that left, mid left midfield or left wing? What are we going for? Left wing. All right, left wing position. Ricci comes into the squad or Ricky, whatever you want to call him. Anyways, this is the setup for the season. Let's get after it. So here it goes now. This is what we are waiting for. The first season is coming to an end. And I'm kind of hoping that we can be like a mid-table team, you know. We're getting a bunch of draws. So that shows me we have the strength to compete with these teams. But I'm also seeing a lot of losses. These teams are ones that we should possibly do well against. Hellos Verona is a big win and Spezia is a loss. That puts us into the 15th position which technically would keep us safe from going down into the Serie A. So we have established Parma immediately in the first season as a Serie A club, which makes me very happy to see. Our goal difference is a minus 16. That's okay with me. The squad itself is filled with players who are going up in their ratings. Plus four for Lopez or Crespo. Plus four for Raspadori or Chiesa. And a nice plus two, I believe, for Orsolini, who is supposed to be, of course, uh, Gian Gianfranco Zola. Uh, man is up to an 81. Congratulations. And Turam, I forgot to change his position. Well done, Johnny. That is exactly what you should have not forgotten about. Anyways, exciting prospect. Ooh. All righty then, Turam. Let's see. That has me excited now. Lovely. I had no idea. Anyways. He's now a right back and Cyprian can finally play his games in that CDM position. He's been pretty unhappy because he has had zero games played due to Turam con constantly playing there. So that's an issue. Uh, but yeah, the, the Belgian center back here has done a decent job. Danilo is old. He needs to go. 38 years old. Buffon has held himself up there. Congratulations, Gianluigi. Love you, man. 80 rated. Pesela is at the 77. And if I'm not mistaken... The uh, Parma squad that we were talking about had a left back who was Italian. Antonio Benarivo. Yes, Italy international. There we go. He was an Italian. So maybe Pesella stays as the replacement for Benarivo. If he keeps on going up in his rating, I'd happily keep him around. So that would be a nice one to have. But uh, we'll, we'll keep going here, lads. And one thing I have to actually mention is that we might have to change the formation. Yes, because that Parma team that I mentioned to you did not necessarily play with... Um, how do I put this like? They didn't play with wingers. So maybe we might have to find a different formation that we can run in order to fit everyone in. And this would technically be the one, right? It would be the one. They had three uh, midfielders with the likes of... Um, let me tell you them again. With the likes of Fuser, with the likes of Baggio, and then Veron. And then they had in the attacking midfield, Zola. So maybe that's something I'm going to focus on. Let's take our profits from Richie and Man, or Man, in the next season. And also Cyprian could go. But it all depends on the budget. I don't know how much the budget is going to be. I don't know how much we're going to be getting for these players. Raspadori, as I said, he's going to be the man leading the squad and he has done so. Uh, man has done well. Lopez, only six goals and one assist, but at least he got good growth, so I'm happy with that. And uh, the rest of the team, as you can clearly tell, they did struggle, which was to be expected in the first season in the Serie A. New season's budget is going to be determining how much we can spend on the right positions. 25.8 million. Okay, 
That's already a great start. But as I mentioned before, some of the highest valued players in our team are going to be transfer listed. So Man and Richie both transfer listed. We, we got to go with a formation that works to fit in all those types of players that we're chasing down. And uh, I think it's just the right move to make. And the same goes for Supriya, actually. I'm willing to let him go as well. He's only 4 million anyways. But after selling those players, I have a good feeling that we can do a great rebuild here. As one of the center backs and one of the ones that could possibly turn out to, kind of, turn out to be the Canavato of this team, we are bringing in Matteo Lovato. He comes in into the squad after the first year of his loan. He returns to his original squad. And now we have bought him from that original squad which was Atalanta. So he comes into our team as a youngster to take over that centre-back position from the old man that we had there, who was already around the 60 ratings. So that's going to be a nice upgrade. I'm excited about his signing, but we don't stop there. Alongside him, another Italian talent, not so highly rated though, in terms of his potential. Someone that we have to really work on and someone that has to step up his game. Obviously, back in the day, Parma had two players in that centre-back spot who are Italian. They had Cannavaro and they had Lorenzo Minotti in their squads at, that, uh, at their times. And obviously, these guys all didn't play at the same time. They're just considered the best Parma players in their positions throughout the history of the club or the recent history, at least, uh, like the last 30 uh, years, it seems like, from the numbers I'm seeing. But Lorenzo Minotti has played for Parma from 1987 to 1996. So this guy could be on Minotti. And apparently he was, at the time, playing along the time that Baresi was playing. Hence why he couldn't push into the starting lineup in the Italian national team and was held out of it. Obviously, Baresi being one of the most well-recognized and best centre-backs in history. Um, we'll see how this one turns out for us as our very own Lorenzo Minotti. And then the other one, I believe, has more of a chance of becoming Cannavaro. Even though both of these, both of these guys are kind of tall, so none of them actually qualify to be Cannavaro. But hey. I can't choose how tall players are. The Veron of this team, in my opinion, is going to be Nicolas Dominguez. He comes in into our team, a, a midfielder, a central midfielder who has basically everything, who can move forward, who can defend, who just looks like a top, top notch signing for us. I think he's going to do a great job in that three of that midfield that we have set up. He's going to be playing as the right center midfielder. Coming in into that defensive midfield position, basically, uh, these are the likes of Fuser, Baggio, and Veron, these are the ones that we're going for. And this man is Italian, so you can choose if he should be your Fuser or if he should be the Baggio of this team. By the way, he's not Roberto Baggio. That's a different Baggio. Uh, but this man is going to be changed into a CDM very soon. Tommaso Popega comes in into our squad. Six foot two giant here to play in the CDM position. Very well rounded as well, which has me excited about the future of our team. And to finish off, one of the biggest talents that we can bring in, really. An Italian to possibly be the Baggio of this squad. Nicolo Rovella comes in. And again, a top, top-notch talent that uh, currently is playing for Genoa, I believe. He's on loan uh, from Juventus. And I think Genoa might be going down. It's not looking too good for them. So he's going to be back at Juventus after the season. I wonder if he's going to be getting some play time. Juventus do seem to be getting stronger now with the likes of Lahovic at the striking position. They seem to be more confident. They seem to be building the next strong Juventus team with a bunch of young players there being uh, quite successful as well. Zakaria having recently joined the likes of uh, McKenny already being there. Lots of good talents. But enough talk about Juventus. Let me show you how the team is looking right now and I'll show you the prices we have paid as well. So now we have the boys here, Lopez, Raspadori, Orsolini, and then the new ones, Rovella, Pobega, Dominguez. Those are the lads coming in. And the centre-backs in Lovato and Casale have come into the squad as well. We are now ready for the rest of the season. Now, I do have some money still, but I'm not going to spend it. I'm going to let these boys handle it and see how it goes. May 2023. Has that team that we have put together been good enough? And by the way, the players that we have purchased, guys, it doesn't mean that they're going to be here forever. We can easily upgrade some of the players 
to others later on if we want to and if the budget allows so because especially if they're not performing well enough we have to upgrade because dynamic potential is not going to be good but Parma has improved we went from 15 to 10 I think that's a good upgrade for us going to that position with only a minus four goal difference here 48 points not too far away from the top six ideally next season I would love to see us in that sixth position but obviously, there are some massive clubs right here that are holding us back from getting there. It's going to be a journey to get to that spot. But we're looking at Lopez at a 77. Raspadori looking ridiculous right now. Orsolini has been doing a great job. Ravella up to a 78. Dominguez, 82. Popega has gone up after changing to becoming a CDM. Pezzella is doing a good job. Turam is enjoying the position of his dad and the center backs have gone up as well and Buffon is retiring this season yes so we have to find the regen of Buffon immediately in the next season so that is going to be one of the most important things that we can do in the upcoming year the top performer of course is Raspadori Dominguez with six and four Lopez only with a five and two that is very disappointing so as I was mentioning there can be upgrades in the future so, if I can bring in an Argentinian striker that's going to be better than Lopez, I will do so. I am not attached to him. So, we'll go ahead and let go of him if he doesn't perform or if he doesn't grow next season. If his development plans are not looking good and it takes too long. So, I'm willing to do that. The budget is looking very good though at the end of the year. We have kept a nice little chunk on the side. And now we're going to move into the new season and look for Buffon's regen immediately. 7.8 million. I do expect the budget to be like 25, 30. Oh, 44. Okay. I like that a lot. I really do. So now it comes down to Lopez. Lopez, lads. How's it looking? How is it looking now? Can you actually... Can you still grow? Oh, seven weeks. Oh, you know what? It's not too bad on okay form. Maybe there's still hope for Jose Manuel Lopez. Maybe. So we have found the regen with immediate effect, my, my friends. It is Carbone. He's coming in immediately. This guy's supposed to be the regen of Buffon. And he comes in at a 78 rating. Yeah, he definitely is the regen. My God, Osterwald was playing goalkeeper. <laughs> um, so here he is, guys. Garbone comes in at a massive rating. My God, his positioning sucks, but the rest is looking incredible. He is the new Buffon. There we go. Immediately signed him. Looked into the free agent, Italian goalkeeper. Bang, he's there and he was ready to go. So this has me excited. He is extremely high rated, which I didn't expect personally, but gives me so much hope moving forward now. I thought the goalkeeper would bring us down, but this could actually end up being a step up. If this guy gets a plus three, he's already higher rated than the old Buffon that we had. Our third season is coming to an end and we're beating teams like Inter, Fiorentina, Sassuolo. No, okay, we're not beating them, but it is a good month there. I'll take that. Now, if we can finish strong here, I can possibly see us maybe challenge for the top six maybe i'm not too sure we're gonna take a look at the team as well so here it goes oh wow wait we got 11th oh okay now that is big i didn't think that our team would do that bad i mean look at that lopez gone up by plus four raspadori 88 orsolini 84 rovella 81 dominguez has done really well pobeca is up casale is up I mean, the goalkeeper is up to an 82. Was it actually that bad then? Did he start off really bad for us? And then now that he's higher rated, the second half of the season has been better. Is that what has happened here? I see. Okay, so the only position that is below 80 is Casale. I'll see what I do with him. I mean, there's only one real option for that centre-back spot. Hence why I didn't really spend my money. And that is Bastoni. If we can get Bastoni, that'd be great. I have 58 million laid around right now. Um, if I adjust the budget a little bit more, I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, to be honest with you. But 60 million, technically, plus Casale, who is worth how much? How much is Casale? Casale is worth 23 mil. 
maybe, maybe I can make that deal happen. But before we go into anything further, Vlasmodori, clearly best man. Lopez performing better than last season. I'll take that. Pobega looking all right. Dominguez did well. Orsolini plus three, 27 years old. I like that. That's not too bad, you know. It is a bit surprising though, like, why did this team not perform better than it did? 11th position is really shocking, considering that the team is really good now. Maybe it's the setup that I have. Does anyone have the leadership trait? I'm just going to double check right now, just in case, because if they do, we're going to turn them. You know what? We're going to give it to Buffon's regen. Carbone is going to be the captain, uh, the captain of the squad. Yes. And we're going to stop this drop back nonsense. And we're going to go 40 with 35 depth. No long ball. Balanced with. We don't need that much with. We're playing a narrow-ish formation. And uh, hopefully, this is going to help us out to perform a little bit better. Uh, Pobega, I'm going to tell you to stay back while attacking. The same goes for the fullbacks. And hopefully, that's going to bring us a little bit more moving forward. I do want to see better performances here. This is a very shocking season considering how much our team has improved. So I'm a bit worried here. I'll try and get Bastoni, but I don't think I have enough money. I highly doubt that our budget continues to stay the same like it was at the end of last season. It actually does. Oh, okay. You know what? For some reason in FIFA 22 and 21, I felt like at the end of the season, the money didn't carry over into the next one. But I guess I might have been wrong. So maybe actually keeping the money is the right choice. Casale is up to an 80 now, which kind of makes it harder. But I got to say that last season's performance was not good enough. I'm just I'm just not impressed with it. I'm just going to be quite honest with you guys on that one. I mean, it, it takes him 23 weeks to go up. By the way, these development plans, obviously, I always redo them at the beginning of season. So just a little bit of a heads up. But I think Casale being 26 as well is not necessarily helping. I'm going to go for the big boy. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves Bastoni, who is worth 63 million right now. We're going to get a, hopefully, a good swap deal here. 26 mil plus 60. I assume they want even more. Let's see how this goes. Oh, they accept it. Let's go. So that deal is done, my friends. Bastoni is coming into the team. That, my friends, is the Cannavaro of this squad. I know he's taller, but still. Lads. May 2025. I just left the room to get myself some food. <laughs> I think you can see it here on the side. Anyways, we're here now. May 2025. And I'm seeing a bunch of wins. A bunch of wins. Another bunch of wins. Another. Wait. Are we fighting for the title? Ah, so close. <clears throat> That's much better though. That is much better from what we have seen before. Parma in the second spot. 71 points. Still, the goal difference not looking too good. That defense has not held up well uh, or as well as I hoped it, it would have because we are basically on the same level as Roma when it comes to the goal difference. Uh, we need to be doing better than that. Uh, good thing is we have picked up good results. So who has been the main man? I swapped over the players in terms of positions because for some reason the team was not getting good results. So I tried to I tried something different than like January. And it seems to have worked out. I don't know. Now I don't know if I should switch, switch it back or not. And I think I'm going to do it. Anyways, Vaspadori, 92 now. This guy is always incredible. Lopez, 85. Orsolini, 87. I'm mostly looking forward to trying out the players that I haven't used before. So I don't think I've ever used this Lopez. I don't think I've used Orsolini yet. I don't think I've used Pobega yet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Turam I'm excited about. I think I've used him though. Carbone is going to be quite an interesting one as well. Let's see how he does. Pesela only a plus two this season. I hope he keeps going up. He's only 27 years old. I need him to do better. He's on great form, which is a good sign. And uh, Turam is very unhappy. Why is Turam very unhappy? What is going on, Turam? Is it? He's joining Bayern Munich when the transfer opens. Okay. Well, we'll have to buy back Turam next season. Nice. Anyways, stats wise, we're looking at Raspadori 16 and 5. Dominguez, Dominguez 15 and 5. All right. Lopez 14 and 1. I mean, Turam, the fullback has eight goals and six assists. Orsolini, what are you doing? He has a plus three this season, which is great. But my God, buddy, you need to perform better. 
and just generally the team. I'm expecting them to score a lot more goals than they are doing. And even in the season, I told Turam to stay back while attacking and he's gotten goals and assists now. So a lot of things are confusing me about this Parma squad for, so, for sure. I'm not sure what the hell is happening. But one thing I'm sure about is the fact that we're a Champions League football team now. So that is huge. Let's get after it. So Turam is back immediately. I have brought in a bunch of players. We still have 93 million. So you might be asking yourself, what have you done? Well, I've brought in a bunch of players to take over the bench from the free agents. I wanted to strengthen our lineup in this season, not just in a starting line, uh, not in a starting lineup, but I wanted to strengthen it on the bench here. So Guerra comes in. Herman comes in, Garcia comes in, who are the standout players. Then we have Baxter and Dix here coming in into the central midfield positions. Marin as a backup goalkeeper, Benson as a left back. So that is the setup for the year. Lopez, if you ain't performing, I'm going to buy myself Lautaro Martinez. Just letting you know, pal. So you better perform right now. And uh, if you only get like 15 goals again, I'm sorry, pal. It's time to move on because this team is good enough to get both strikers to score more than just 15 goals, in my opinion. And that's what I'm fully expecting. If I don't see that, well, that's a big issue. Now, when it comes to the centre-back position, I need Lovato to go up. And when it comes to the left-back position, especially, I need Pesela to step it up. I really hope his dynamic potential is going to be good this season. So... Here we go, guys. That's the team for the season. First season in the Champions League. Oh, oh, the pain. No way, man. Barcelona just smacked us around. It was like a wake-up call. Wow, it's 6-2 on aggregate. So that tells you the team is not ready yet at all. I think it really comes down to that defense. I really do. I think it's a left-back spot, and I think uh, that's the issue. But nonetheless, guys, let's see how this moves on. I really hope that Pezella is going up in his stats. If he doesn't, we have a big, big problem because there's no one else as a left back that is Italian that we could bring in to play that position. I might have to look into free agents and just hope to get lucky that we find an Italian there. And I just don't think that's going to happen. So it's beautiful to see that we have won the cup. We have won it against Bologna there, I believe. So that's huge. Thank you very much. And... We have won the league. So that is amazing. We have won the league, my friends, for the first time in 2026. I will take that as a huge achievement and I will look into the team. Raspadori 93, Lopez 88. Well done, pal. Orsolini 88. I like that. Dominguez as well. Rovella up to an 87. Pobega up to a 90. When did that happen? I didn't realize he was that high rated. Pezella plus two. Hmm. Okay. Astoni 89. Lovato 87. Carbone 88. Wasn't he 84 at the beginning of the season? My God. What the hell happened to you? Turam 88. That's a plus one. And the bench. Some of these guys are looking very good. I had to put balanced development plans on these guys. So they don't, they don't overtake the guys up here. Because they have potential to be special. So we got to be careful with some of these guys potentially taking over in the starting lineup. But the bench is looking very good right now. So I'm very happy with that. And the performers. Come on now. There we go. All right. 30 goal season for Aspadori. 30 and 4. Dominguez, once again, incredible performances for him. Paul Lopez. Uh, Paul Lopez. <laughs> Jose Manuel Lopez with the 17 and 3. So that's 20 goal contributions. Because he's 88 rated now, I'll keep him. But... Um, he needs to do better than that. Raspadori is outperforming him massively. Orsolini, you're still here, pal. Let's go. That's nice. Well done. Rovella with 17 assists. Oh, yes. That has been a great season, man. Lovely. Now we just got to hope that Pezella keeps going up in his stats. And the same goes for the entire defense. He's only 28. I've had fullbacks still go up in their rating at the age of 33. So now that this team has done as well as it has and him seeing a plus five on his form, that gives me hope for the future. We are going into the Champions League next season as the title holders of the Serie A. More respect will be shown. We're going to get into the season 2027. And that, I think, what is that? What season is that? Like, I'm just, I'm just going to check here because I said within six seasons, we're going to get it done, right? One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, next season is the one. Oh God, I better get it done. Let's see how it goes this time. In 2027, I said six seasons, but I feel like it's going to take another one. I got to be honest with you guys. Oh, five forum penalties against Bayer Leverkusen. Get in. Oh man, actually, it's not a good sign that we had to go through in penalties. Liverpool, no way. Oh, 1-1. One, one. We're through. Oh, semi-finals against Manchester United. Please, please, please. Why so many games? My team is tired, man. Stop giving me so many games. Champions League final. <laughs> yes. Predict it. It's right. I do it all the time. Yes, man. Come on. Champions League finalist. P -p 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 Parma. I'm going to record the game later on uh, tomorrow, actually, because it's already 1 a.m. where I'm living and I don't want to annoy my neighbors screaming around because I'm about to lift the Champions League title. But I'm excited to use Raspadori again. He obviously is ridiculous. Lopez, Lopez, Lopez got up to a 90, which is impressive. And I improved his weak foot. Five star, five star now. Orsolini, I'm really excited to try and use. I'm, I, he's 30 years old now, so it's time for him to step it up. I didn't even, I didn't realize that he was 30. Ravella up to an 89. Dominguez up to a 90 has been incredible. Pobega, though, what a huge surprise. 92 rated. Pezella, 86. That was good enough for us to get in there. The lowest rated player in the team. Someone had to be the lowest rated one. Bastoni up to a 90. Lovato up to an 88. Turam up to a 91. Center midfielder turned right back. It worked out fine, didn't it? Carbone up to a, an 89 rating. I think I personally want to give the captaincy to a player that actually exists. And I'm going to give it to Pezella. He's the original of the squad that has made it until here. So we're going to give the captaincy to him and see how he does. He doesn't have the best stats, I got to admit, but he's good enough for me. So we'll see how that one goes. And let's take a look into the individual stats. Has Lopez been able to compete with Raspadori? 29 and 4. Dominguez, 21 and 15. Man, this guy's incredible. I can't wait to use him. Lopez, 21 and 4. A little bit of an improvement over last year. Last year, got 20 goal contributions. This year, 25. I mean, hopefully he plays better in gameplay than his stats have shown so far. Orsolini did well. The backup striker got 12 goals in 27 games. I mean, look at that. This guy probably could have done better than Lopez if he played the entire time. Pobega, 9 and 2. Tudam, 18 and 6 again. How does this guy get 8 and 6 every time? Unreal. He's doing really well. And Ravella with the 11 assists. So those are the stats. And now, have we won the league? Is that something we can look into as well? Let's see. Serie A. Yes. Let's go for the double, baby. Let's go for the double. What have we done in the cup? We have won the cup as well. But it was the super cup. The regular cup, we have won it as well. Oh, boy. We're about to go for a quad, uh, quadruple. All right, lads. I'm ready for it. I hope you are as well. Atletico Madrid coming up next. As I said, I'm going to record this tomorrow, but you're going to see it in a second here. Joao Felix, Colo Moani. I don't know who that is, but it excites me now. Tete playing right wing. I think that's the guy from Shakhtar. Uh, I think he's a Brazilian winger, no? Curtis Jones, um, Neves, Molejo, Lacroix playing left back. Interesting. Godfrey, Gonzalez, Mukiele, Obla. Solid team. Very solid. As always, Atletico is tends to be ridiculous every time. So... Is what it is. I'm going to get some sleep and I'll be back with the game. Cannavaro. There he is. That's good to see that the TIFO is being used. Good morning, guys. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, let's jump into it. This is the big one. Parma, this is your comeback. You have won the Serie A title twice now. And now your chance is here to win the biggest trophy of them all and complete the rebuild. I'm excited to see who this Kolo Moani guy is and see if he's any good. Oh, well, here he goes. Here he goes. Tete, the Brazilian, brings the ball inside. Oh, that's good movement. That's really good movement. Gotta be careful. Buffon 2.0 gets that one. Lovely. Moving it forward with Raspatori. Lopez making a great run. Lopez against Godfrey. Lopez takes it onto his left. Hits it on the finesse. Yeah, not bad, you know. I haven't scored a finesse in, I feel like, years. So, um, if I could score one here, I'd love that. Here goes Turam. Go on then, son. Make your father proud. Lovely. Great steal off the opponent. Here goes the run off Lopez down the wing. Lopez seems to be the main guy so far. Cross coming in towards Raspadori. Not going to get that, but we're going to get this. 
and we're going to move it forward. We're going to bring it to Lopez. Again, that's not Lopez, is it? That was not Lopez. Is it? No, it's Orsolini. Oh, yeah, they look very similar. I got to be careful with that one. Oh, too damn good steal. No. Yes, Raspadori. Imagine. Oh, wow. He actually did get past the block with the skill move, but I messed it up. I should have just taken a shot. I don't know why I'm coming up with weird roulettes inside the box. This is the Champions League final, man. Madrid, just outside our box. Great movement. And yes, let's go. Double save from our boy right there at the back. I love to see that. Graspadori brings it back over to Orsolini. Orsolini now. Seen the run of Lopez. He finds him. Lopez. Lopez. Oh, that's the finish. A Crespo-like run. A Crespo-like finish. The pass coming in from the... um, What's his name again? From Gianfranco Zola. His second version here. Beautiful goal for Parma. And we take the lead in the Champions League final. A great run to get away from defenders. Even though Lopez did not perform in the simulations as much as I hoped he would. Our number 10 is doing bits right now in the Champions League final. So he's making up for the uh, the issues he's caused earlier on. And uh, now I'm very happy with him. Double tap pass on to, uh, into the middle. Here goes Dominguez. He has scored plenty of goals and he wants to get involved immediately again. Great pass. Colomuani now pushing forward. Oh, an even better ball. But I got to say so far... Kefren Turam has been incredible in that right midfield position, man. Over the top by Rovella. Beautiful football. We're making our run. Orsolini. Here he comes. Orsolini. Inside. Oh, this is great. Over to... What a save. The defender was on the floor, so I knew it couldn't be offside. But my God, what a save from Oblak. He just about gets his fingertips to it. Unreal. Lopez, can you get this, pal? Go on, Lopez. Oh, he hits it onto the crossbar. Bastoni and Bastoni scores. The Cannavaro region. Let's go, buddy. Yes. 2-0 up against Atletico Madrid. I have to say, this Parma team feels incredibly powerful. They are incredible, boys. Such good players that we have put together here. And uh, obviously, a bunch of them you know, but some of them... That we haven't used before. Like the likes of Orsolini and such. And Lopez. They feel great in this team. So once again. I hope this kind of showcases you guys. What types of players you could be going for. In your career modes as well. Because it's so much fun. It's so much fun to use new players. Each time I do these rebuilds. Nice deal by Orsolini. Bad pass for me. Joao. Yes. Lovato. Let's go pal. Raspadori making that diagonal run. Raspadori up against Oblak. <sighs> I mess up with him all the time, don't I? Lopez. Lopez up against two. And he keeps winning the headers, man. This guy, just like Crespo, is not bad in the air, you know. He's really the reincarnation of Crespo. I love it. Here goes. Here goes the Chiesa one. And Dominguez, Veron. Passing it back. We're going to have to wait here for a few seconds. Bring it over to Rovella. Rovella with the long shot that we should forget immediately. Solid. Bastoni gets it. Move it. Yes. Beautiful pass. Orsolini. Orsolini. Come on, lads. You can do this. I believe in you. The counter of dreams. The counter of dreams. Let's go. Parma. I love it. I absolutely love it, man. We take a team from the Serie B, build them up to be champions in Italy, to win the cup in Italy, to go ahead and try and win the quadruple by winning the Champions League here. Man, this is going to be huge. This is incredible. Serie A title winners, cup winners, super cup winners. And now, soon to be confirmed, as the Champions League winners. One of the most successful rebuilds when you look at it from that way, uh, from that angle, because we don't really have many teams that have won quadruples and stuff. Uh, I don't. I think this might be the first one, you know. Look at the press from Atletico Madrid now. 
after going down 3-0. They are really out here, pressing high, which we're going to use to our advantage and use it and move with the likes of Lopez. Lopez, Lopez. Go on then, son. Go on then, son. Ah, oh, yes. It's done. This is finished. Lopez is incredible. He genuinely feels like an incredible striker. Strong, fast, good dribbler, incredible finishing, good in the air. What more do you want from a striker? Atletico Madrid with the last chance of the game, my friends. But this has been one of the most dominant Champions League finals we've had, despite playing on the highest difficulty and everything. But this team has showcased their strength in a beautiful way. Parma is not only back into the city, uh, they are at the top of Europe now. The one and only original left in this squad, Pezzella, the left back, is going to be lifting the trophy for Parma as all these regions of the Parma legends have now done it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's rebuild. The first rebuild of the month of February. Lots of videos to come throughout the month. I appreciate you all and I will catch you on the next one. You guys are the best, man. And uh, thank you so much for your incredible support. And uh, look at those colors, yellow and blue. That is who I am supporting in my heart as well. Guys, I hope this whole thing gets resolved. It is an absolute mess. And I just wish peace upon everyone. And I wish that everyone uh, doesn't have to worry about their lives in these days. And, you know, it's 2022, man. I thought we were past st stuff like this. I thought, I thought stuff like this would only be left for the history books. But sadly, it is not happening. And I really hope it's going to be resolved as soon as possible in the best way possible. And, uh, yeah, it is what it is, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.